here's to the crazy ones, the misfits, the rebels, the troublemakers, the round pegs in the square holes, the ones who see things differently. They're not fond of rules, and they have no respect for the status quo. You can quote them, disagree with them, glorify or vilify them. About the only thing you can't do is ignore them, because they change things. They push the human race forward. While some may see them as the crazy ones, we see genius. Because the people who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones who do. The world's filled with joy and problems. Boundless Innovations creates award-winning innovative solutions to problems in dozens of industries. Our intellectual property contributed to over one trillion in market value creation, designing award-winning solutions to consumer problems by developing new products that win in the marketplace. Facts verified by intellectual property attorneys and engineers who work for NASA and at the US Patent Office as patent examiners. <laughs> Daryl Fertegas here, founder of Boundless Innovations and Dreamland Productions. I'm a three-time award-winning social entrepreneur, prolific inventor, innovation scholar, and expert seen on TV. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my presentation. I'm here to report one-of-a-kind historic business news while sharing one of the most amazing business stories in American history as I prove I'm one of the most talented product visionaries and inventors in the current era. And my work helped companies produce over a trillion dollars in market value creation. How so? It's important to note, when I was in college, I was inspired to try to set a new U.S. history invention or creativity record. Not out of ego, out of my selfless desire to serve the public and to do the greatest good for the greatest many with my one life I had to live. Business tycoons throughout history, such as Benjamin Franklin, Walt Disney, George Westinghouse, Andrew Carnegie, Nikola Tesla, Thomas Edison, Alexander Graham Bell, and many more inspired me to create new businesses and to invent new products to market around the world to improve the quality of life and standard of living for as many people as possible while creating jobs globally. In 2004, I conducted an experiment to see if I had the potential to break Thomas Edison's invention record. For my experiment, I completed a literature review about Thomas Edison. I even researched the Thomas Edison papers at Rutgers University and purchased Thomas Edison's diary, which I'm showing right here, to understand how Edison invented. I even won an academic scholarship for my innovation research from George Mason University and the Institute for Humane Studies, where I got to live with scholars for free to analyze why some products succeeded in history versus failed. I then put my research to action by becoming the only student in my entire college, and then in my MBA program to win new invention awards. I then helped companies design, market, and invent new products that produced record-setting sales results in the millions and even billions. Now back to my experiment, I have a degree in psychology and studied neuroscience primarily to understand how the brain invents. The human brain thinks of 60,000 thoughts per day. So I knew it was possible if I could clear my mind and just think of inventions all day, I could perhaps set a new US history invention record in the future. So to accomplish, I began to practice transcendental meditation, yoga. I visited a monastery in Sussex, New Jersey to get to the state of mind known as Samadhi, in yoga science and flow and psychology. When you're not distracted by anything except one goal, my goal was to invent as much as I could, as many industries as possible to see if I could break Edison's invention record. Since I conducted this experiment, over a trillion dollars in market value creation emerged. When companies further developed similar products, I began to design and invent as well. And when I worked with companies to bring products to market, 
and within my own business. It's important to note in 1882, Thomas Edison completed 106 patent applications in one year. Edison didn't always have a proof of concept, minimal viable product, product market fit, sales or traction. If we waited for Thomas Edison to do all that on his own without the help of investors, we might be living in the dark today. Investors paid Edison to work and provided funding so we could hire the right team, pay them well so they were motivated to work to create breakthrough innovations. And that's how the Industrial Revolution emerged. Inspired by Edison, I wanted to see if I could break his invention record. And there I am live on TV, using a mind machine to alter my brainwaves from beta alpha to theta state of consciousness, where both brain hemispheres work together more efficiently to devise creative solutions to problems. Not only did I meditate, practice yoga, I used $10,000 mind machines that incorporated light, sound, motion, and biofeedback to help me optimize my creative potential to see if I could break Edison's invention record in the future. And I began to, verified by Coffee Law. As I just stated, verified by the Thomas Edison papers, Thomas Edison filed 106 patent applications in one year with the help of investors and while being paid to work. Without that support, I filed over 350 provisional patent applications in about three months on inventions, business ideas, and product concepts in over 35 industries. Here's my 500 plus patent applications. I was inventing products in hardware, software, search, social media, FinTech, PropTech, IoT, aerospace, military, holograms, augmented reality, smart TV innovations, food and beverage, games and toys, and a hundred times more. Richard Branson told we must promote ourselves to make our dreams come true. Ladies and gentlemen, that's all I'm trying to do. In all of human history, as far as I know, not even Thomas Edison or Steve Jobs began to create over 300 product concepts at the young age I did. Steve Jobs got fired by the CEO he hired. It was a setback. Steve Jobs blamed Apple's near bankruptcy due to that experience. A con man sued by the attorney general for scamming thousands of people hurt my business. Now I'm working on my comeback because in the past I was just warming up. It's important to note Thomas Edison wasn't the only one who invented the light bulb. Humphrey Davies did 76 years prior. Alexander Graham Bell wasn't the only one who invented the telephone. Elijah Gray did prior. Should we forget contributors in history? No. Albert Einstein said, unless a person appears absurd at first, they often don't have tremendous value. I'm gonna make some outlandish statements in this presentation, but I'm just sharing the facts of this experiment. In no way am I trying to take credit away from any other inventor, founder, entrepreneur. I'm just stating the facts. And when I conducted this experiment, I began to envision similar products to what later became Fitbit, Square, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Nest, Ring, Keychain, Breathalyzer, Clubhouse, and a hundred times more. I'm going to prove all these facts in this presentation. How much I began to invent is historic. I now have over a thousand ideas of mine at the patent office. So you're wondering if I'm speaking the truth. Well, here's an example of just 10 of my patent applications from 2004. Driven to solve problems. I could go on for 300 pages, if not many more, much more. So what did I accomplish, my friend? My award-winning ideas, intellectual property I created in over 35 industries, creative strategies executed, work plus products I designed, invented, and brought to market within my own business, and while working for and with companies, collectively produced over 150 million units sold and 2.5 billion in sales revenue, seen on TV, QVC, online, and retail stores worldwide, most recently with the product Clamp Champion, a top seller in QVC three years in a row, producing millions in sales results year after year. In addition, in 2004, I was on the Jay Leno Tonight Show, filmed at Yankee Invention Expo with my healthy cigarette invention. My product was similar to the e-cigarette to inspire the development of the 30 billion industry. At the time, many people said it could never work. I knew it would, and I have a healthier version of an e-cigarette, which I showcased in 2004, but wait do you see what I have today. Then in 2006, I was recognized by the History Channel as a modern marvel in the Invent Now competition hosted by the History Channel. I won an award inventing a mobile coupon and financial payment app prior to the App Store and smartphone revolution to inspire the development of the 250 billion mobile fintech industry. 
How so in 2004, I filed a patent application on a credit card reader for a phone or watch to process payments, keep track of your expenditures, even your ID and credit cards in a digital format, similar to what Apple Pay later became, Apple Wallet, Google Pay, Stripe, and the Cash App, and many popular FinTech apps you use today. At the time, many people told me, Daryl, grow up, get a real job. A phone could never process payments or credit cards. It's just not possible. You got to find possibility thinkers. I reached out to Apple Corporation, hoping to work with Steve Jobs, a visionary, to develop an open innovation app development platform. I was winning awards from the History Channel, inventing mobile apps, but yet there's no real app store. So of course I had a similar idea. Many of us have similar ideas. If Apple let me in the door, we would have made history together. Sadly, they had a no unsolicited idea policy. If only they had an open innovation policy, well, that helped Apple grow tremendously. I didn't give up. Then I was on ABC's hit TV show, American Inventor, with my airbag helmet invention. George Foreman almost invested live on TV in my product. After appearing on television with my airbag helmet, as you see right here, my prototype on TV, companies in Europe and Asia developed a similar product that's now saving lives. I knew what could happen. Some naysayers lived in fear saying, oh, what if the airbag doesn't work? You have to be a possibility thinker and solve problems as you go, not be a naysayer. Then I was on CNBC, the big idea with inventions of mine and inventor clients I was representing in my own business as a licensing agent, helping inventors find licensing deals. Then the Discovery Channel Pitchman TV show recognized me as a prolific inventor, inventing a wearable to help drivers stay awake when tired of driving to keep the road more safe. It was smart glasses that could measure your brain waves. Upon falling asleep or getting tired, a light would flash, the arms would vibrate, and your favorite song would play to help keep drowsy drivers more awake on the road and keep the road safer for all. And the invention did far more than just that. I also received an academic scholarship for my innovation research and won prestigious invention and innovation awards from some of the most recognized institutions in our country, such as the History Channel. Time Magazine, the National Inventors Hall of Fame Foundation, and the Rockman Institute for Innovation and Entrepreneurship all recognized my one-of-a-kind ability to devise creative solutions to problems by inventing new products that solve problems, heal hurts, and win in the marketplace. I also helped companies win first place prizes and gold medal awards. Right there with Clamp Champion, with the inventor Dave Bolka at Impex Invention Trade Show, I helped them win a gold medal award. I created a social network for inventors that had thousands of monthly visitors and co-created the Discovery Channel Pitchman TV show about new product development and marketing. It was my copyright verified by Coffee Law. That TV show had over 3.5 million viewers at one point. I also taught invention workshops at a STEM school to inspire students to invent, as you see in the left-hand corner. Speak at inventor clubs on the topic of how to invent winning products. I have a history of inventing more winning product concepts than most. As a result of all these accomplishments, the New Jersey Technology Council recognized my business as one of the most innovative in New Jersey. And the publishers of the book, Innovations of the World, after nominations received, recognized my business as one of the most innovative in the world, as you see right here in this book. I produced over a 350X ROI in my business of an initial investment in myself without the help of real outside investors. However, if I had investors from the beginning, I would have grown a billion dollar company by now, but I was just warming up in the past. So what else did I begin to invent? It's unbelievable, but way do I showcase it? And in no way am I trying to take credit away from any other founder or entrepreneur or inventor. Contributors throughout history should be recognized. There's many inventors of the light bulb, but we often just think of Edison who perfected a better form of it while neglecting the research of others. My friends, before Square came out, valued at over $100 billion, I found a patent application in 2004 on a similar product. To what Square later became, Jack Darcy, CEO of Square, didn't file a patent application until 2009. According to the first to invent law, I might just be the true first inventor by law. To an innovation now valued at well over $100 billion. Here's my provisional patent application to prove it, my invention lab book record. We're going to more details in the second part of this presentation. Google bought Fitbit for 2 billion. Fitbit filed a patent application around 2010. I filed a patent application in 2004 on a very similar product to what Fitbit and Apple Watch later became, which collectively sold over 150 million units. It produced billions in market value creation. 
I also won an award in my MBA program, Inventing Smart Glasses, similar to Google Glass and Apple Glass. And all the smart glasses you see today, I found at the patent office in 2004. Similar products. As you see, the History Channel named me a modern marvel. Inventing financial payment apps, mobile coupon apps, messenger apps, and seeing the future before the app store even came out. And I won an award in my MBA program, Inventing Smart Glasses. This is when I was just warming up. I also completed a research study on the psychological benefits of social networking on individuals in 2001 at Salisbury University because it was my dream to build the largest social networking website in the world. And I began to. I described on my website that I began in 2002, completed in 2004. We're gonna unite the minds of students, business owners, advertisers, scientists, inventors, and all people to a web community. Anything you wish to share, stories, ideas, pictures, videos, movies, experiences, post to our web community. That was my copyright and business method patent pending application. That's similar to Facebook, unite the minds of everyone, share your stories. Instagram, share your videos and stories to a web community. YouTube, share your videos, post them, share your experiences. Snapchat, share your stories. TikTok, share your short form movies. Tumblr, share anything. Twitter, post ideas and stories and comments and follow people. Clubhouse and audio social network. I swear under the US constitution, I began to design and describe similar products. When I was just warming up, when companies further developed my product descriptions, and I filed at the patent office years prior. Collectively, over a trillion dollars in market value creation emerged and over 150,000 jobs formed and billions in profits and billions in sales resulted time and time again. When companies also designed and invented similar ideas that I also created, I was just warming up. I didn't fail to execute, I pivoted. I built a social network for inventors and co-created the Discovery Channel Pitchman TV show about new product development and marketing. Here's an example of that show. As you're seeing in a second. Hi, I'm Billy Mays. And I'm Anthony Sullivan. And we're here to tell you about our new show, Pitchman. For years, we've taken your designs and turned them into gold mines. This is my one shot. It works. This is one of the best demonstrations I've ever seen in my life. I can take my hand in there and I can go. Oh, ooh. And with our new series, you'll find out why there's more to selling than just the yelling. My friends, my patent book is an example of my 500 plus product concepts. I sold light bulb patents and helped design new light bulbs. One filament burns out, another one lights up. I helped design and invent these products you see right here, which collectively produced over 150 million units sold on TV, QVC, online, HSN, and retail stores worldwide. Bed Bath & Beyond, CVS, Rite Aid, Target, Amazon, you name it. In addition, I filed a copyright on a similar TV show to what later became Shark Tank, America's Got Talent, Desperate Housewives, Dancing with the Stars, and 10 times more, while also filing patent applications on similar products to what later became Apple Watch, Fitbit, Ring, Clubhouse, Keychain, Breathalyzer, Airbag, Helmet, the Electronic Cigarette, Mira, Honey, the Coupon App, Apple Wallet, YouTube, Bumble, Tumblr, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Octavus Rift, and a hundred times more. Business often has value based on intellectual property, patents, copyrights, and trademarks. Once you describe your idea in tangible form, that's when copyright protection emerges in copyrights. Companies have further developed similar products as I and took them to market, collectively produced well over a trillion dollars. In the past, I was just warming up. I was helping my mom grow a counseling practice, working in solar, working in telecom industry, working in education, working in government. And as a product manager where I was tied down in contracts where I wasn't allowed to invent outside of my job position if I wanted a paycheck. However, after seeing companies earn billions, produce hundreds of thousands of dollars in revenue and sales and, and millions in revenue and then billions in revenue and sales, while creating over 250,000 jobs, further developing similar products. And I also began to design an event. Only then did I really recognize my one of a kind talent as an inventor is historic. I'm gonna prove all these facts in the second half of the presentation, or at least most of these facts. Since I was a kid, I was inventing. My mom named me after Thomas Edison. My middle name's Thomas. My great grandfather worked with Edison. Since I was a little boy, I was inventing. In 1995, I thought of Music Boy when Game Boy was popular. 
save your song on a chip, share the chip with your friends so your CD doesn't scratch hook music way up to the internet to share songs. I reached out to Nintendo to try to make it happen. The license, they had an unsolicited idea policy. Then I won the award from the History Channel inventing a financial payment mobile coupon app to be named a modern marvel. While also designing messenger apps, social networks, and so much more. And here's my copyright on what later became the Shark Tank TV show, a show where people compete, those with the best ideas, will meet angel investors to turn them into reality. That was my copyright fought at the patent office in 2004. Just a small example of one of my records. And here's my letter to Apple and Disney to try to make it happen. I tried to execute. Sadly, companies have a no unsolicited idea policy because they're afraid entrepreneurs may have similar ideas to their executives and they don't want lawsuits. Understandable. However, you could create a mediation clause to avoid that. And if you follow the law, who invented first, filed at the patent office first, or has the patent granted first, that person should be rewarded. There's always a way to avoid conflict. When you're fair to people, live by the golden rule, are transparent, and by embracing an open innovation policy, Companies and the communities prosper far more so. They can license inventions, acquire them, incubate startups, invest, hire. There's always a win-win way to work together. Joint product development deals. It's what matters is creating products that help people. And that's what I'm about. I want to inspire all companies to host open innovation and talent days, to invite the public to come out and introduce themselves, to be considered for vendoring opportunities, investments, licensing deals, acquisitions. Mentoring, internships. We can't just accept resumes online and expect to find the right talent. Who would hire Thomas Edison today? He dropped out of middle school. We got to meet people. And when we see talent, we got to invest and help them. Because that's how Edison reached their, his potential and Steve Jobs. Now I'm looking for your help to reach my potential because I was just warming up in the past. Shark Tank doesn't have to exist just on TV. It can exist in every town, every college, every business. In every library in America and around the world. When that happens, the world will become a place of boundless opportunities and innovations. Let's make that happen. That's what Boundless Innovations is about. Here's some of my happy customers and clients. The inventor of the LCD projector, Gene Dolgoff. Dave Boca, the inventor of Clamp Champion, Dr. Sundar. I helped him sell these light bulb patents of his, some that I helped design. Helped Gene Bafani find funding for his business, inspired students to invent and so much more that we're going to in part two of the next half of this presentation. I was named best new hire three times, asked to run for public office as a result of my creative leadership, won academic scholarships for my innovation research. I have a history of creating winning product concepts and helping companies grow to record sending sales results in billions of dollars. I'm given a chance to share my ideas to work out win-win deals. Similar products I began to envision, design, and invent as well collectively produced over 2.8 billion products sold, over 3.5 billion customers, and helped produce 100 billion products and apps sold, creating over 500 billion in profits, 250,000 jobs, and over a trillion dollars in market value creation. When companies further developed similar products I designed and filed at the patent office in 2004, I was just warming up. Steve Jobs got fired by the CEO he hired, a con man sued by the attorney general for scamming thousands of people hurt my business. And now I got to make a comeback. And that's what this presentation is about. I'm one of the most talented product visionaries in the 21st century. I will prove that in part two of this presentation or, or if you take time to get to know me. As a result of all these facts verified by intellectual property attorneys and engineers who work for NASA and at the US Patent Office, upon review of my 500 patent applications, work experience and business, these facts are verified by Coffee Law. And my business was named one of the most innovative in New Jersey by the Tech Council. As a result of all these facts, I strongly believe I began to create one of the most innovative and valuable startups in all of US history prior to funding. I'm also in the business of helping companies grow by a collaborative innovation strategy, where we agree to work together to co-develop the best new products possible, to serve the greater good, and find a win-win way to share revenue with all who work with us to accomplish our goals. Teamwork creates the best new products. And that's what I'm about. Walt Disney taught what takes years to accomplish alone can be completed in record setting time and with far better results when we team up with established companies, famous inventors and experts to collaborate and create new products that went in the marketplace. With the coronavirus pandemic, Bloomberg reported close to 500 million jobs were lost worldwide. 
More now than ever before, we need to rebuild the economy to create new jobs and innovations. I'm the right person with the right business, new products, solutions, experience, and new opportunities available in the perfect time in history to make a significant positive impact in the world, especially needed during and after this pandemic. And I guarantee you, I have a new invention that's going to help billions of people, millions of business owners in more ways than most products have in recent history and could emerge into a billion dollar or a trillion dollar company in the future with your help. I'm an honest, ethical businessman who lives by the golden rule and always aims for a win-win deal in business. I'm available for hire as a consultant or an employee. I have products available for licensing, acquisition. I'm open to joint product development deals, investments. If it's a win-win, I'm game. Nothing brings me more joy than creating products that inspire, illuminate, and enrich the hearts and minds of users. So let's work together and do what Steve Jobs inspired the world to do. Let's put a new dent in the universe. Contact me today, 973-723-1628. Daryl, boundlessinnovations.co. The job interview often lasts 30 minutes, so take time to watch the rest of this presentation as I prove these facts and go into more details and share ideas and recommendations that will help your business and life in more ways if you watch the rest of this presentation. But what is my why? It's to solve problems. Rebuild the rainforest clean the water supply, reduce gun violence, create think tanks to promote world peace. All of human history, less than 700 years were peaceful without conflict. We can all develop inner peace and create world peace for creating future of boundless innovations and opportunities moving forward. I'm an entrepreneur, executive, a consultant, a problem solver, and one day I might want to run for office to focus on solving worldly problems. I'm driven with a pro-social mi mission to improve the quality of life and standard of living around the world and to see no child suffer without food, shelter, or clothing in the next 10 to 20 years. You gotta create affordable housing for all and help everyone reach their potential, not a small percent, which is currently emerging. To solve worldly problems, I wanted to understand how consumer problems were solved. So I read leading innovation books, one simple idea, hooked how to build habit boring products, zero to one, how to create disruptive innovation, entrepreneurs, the men and women behind famous brand names and how they did it, blockbusters, the five keys to developing great new products, creating competitive advantage. By reading, I invented better. And then when prestigious invention and innovation rewards time and time again, and then help companies do the same to grow to record setting sales results in the millions, to even billions of dollars with my talents recognized by some of the most prestigious institutions in the world. If you want to invent well in the future, understand how invention worked in the past from the invention of the telescope in 1593 to the telephone in 1876 and the telegraph in 1848. It's important to read invention history. If you can dream it, you can do it. The more you read, the better you invent. Edison filed 106 patent applications in one year with the help of investors. While being paid to work, he filed 106 patent applications. Without that support, I filed over 350 provisional patent applications in two months. Yes, my patent applications were not as detailed as Edison's because I was waiting to be paid and to find investors to bring those products to the market. And I found some investors and I did some work with clients and companies. And I made some amazing things happen. I used mind machines to help me invent better I worked with a neuroscientist who later worked with Deepak Chopra, who built a mind gym that used light, sound, and motion therapy to alter my brainwaves. I used them right there to help optimize my creative potential while meditating, even on mountains and in a monastery, all on my quest to see if I could break Edison's invention record. And one of my first product concepts as a kid was air pockets and sneakers. I was envisioning product concepts all my life since my great-grandfather worked with Edison. I was driven to solve problems by inventing new products that went in the marketplace. And I have a history of creating more winning product concepts than most. But I was just warming up in the past. What is an invention? There's two laws. First to invent law and first to file patent law. You have to conceive of the invention first, no prior art, reduce it to practice by filing a patent application, describe the invention and teach the public how to make and use it. It's gotta be unobvious, novel, create utility, meaning usefulness. If you meet that criteria, you might be rewarded a patent. Then you're a real inventor, if not your product visionary. They're valuable skills, but it's important to understand intellectual property laws to protect your business and dreams and your employers because you don't want to infringe upon the rights of others and get involved in lawsuits. You want to honor IP. It's a valuable asset. My claim to fame was co-creating the Discovery Channel Pitchman TV show. The best pitchman in the country would help market inventors' products and make their dreams come true. And that's exactly what happened. Tom Beers was the producer. Ted Camp was an associate producer who videotaped me for my ideas for this TV show in Fairfield, New Jersey in 2009. This TV show was my copyright. 
It emerged with over 3.5 million viewers at one point. I recommended this TV show to a consumer product company to help them grow to record setting sales results. And that's exactly what happened. We hosted inventor day competitions around the country to find the best new inventors to highlight on this TV show. We built a social network for inventors. I was so happy. One of the hit products was Jupiter Jack. That did very well. Are you guilty of driving or talking show. on your cell phone? Hi, Billy Mays. So happy the that Jupiter your Jack. dreams come true. And mount it on the dash. Preset your radio to 99.3 FM and you're ready to go. Jupiter Jack transmits. I partnered with this consumer product company where I helped design and invent some of these products right here. Some we found in the marketplace that we improved. Some were my inventions or the work of my mother and I and or some clients I was representing. Here's my invention lab book records to prove it pedicure devices, pocket hoses, my drawings and designs helped create these finished products. And with the input of people in Asia and the USA collectively designed winning products that produced over 150 million units sold and 2.5 billion in sales revenue. Then we found more products from the TV show. And all of these ideas came to market as a result of me sharing. Now these products sold in Bed Bath & Beyond, Walmart, Target, and over 30,000 retail stores to produce over 2.5 billion in sales results and well over 150 million units now sold. The companies that mean the door, when we invent together, winning products always emerge. Steve Jobs got fired by the CEO he hired. It was a huge setback. A con man sued by the attorney general for scamming thousands of people I trusted with my dreams because I read on the internet great press about them. But as we know, not everything on the internet is accurate. I was devastated. The company told me to sue to get paid because Insurance companies would pay me the millions I deserved. So I, I did, and they told me I needed to learn how to file lawsuits because it's important to do in this business. I didn't want to file a lawsuit, but I did. And then I was slandered in the news by one of their friends and attorneys made up things about me. Lawsuits are not fun. So why would this company do this to me when I helped them grow? Their cousins sued them. The FBI investigated, the Federal Trade Commission sued them, the Attorney General sued them for scamming thousands of people. A book was written about them stealing the American dream one invention at a time. A movie produced and validated the shredding of the patent office. Class action lawsuits have been filed. Many people got hurt. Now, when I was working with them, I only saw good press. And I had no idea they were breaking laws, but after they broke a contract with me and copied some of my work, I was heartbroken. And my mom was too. My mom had cancer in the 90s went into remission until 2013. Then when she saw products we worked on together going to market, she was devastated and heartbroken when we weren't paid as promised. Her cancer came back and it killed her. When you're not nice to people and you hurt people's feelings, it impacts your immune system. Your immune system can become weaker. I believe that's what happened to my mother. Now, when I wasn't paid for my past products, to the terms agreed to, I didn't have funds for my bigger ideas such as Fitbit, Square, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. I had those products in mind and began to draw and design them and build some prototypes. But we all have setbacks in life. That's how we move forward. That counts. And here I did. I worked with Dave Boca, the inventor of Clamp Champion. He didn't have this invention until he met with me and we had brainstorming sessions. I inspired him to invent and help design, market, and promote this product to produce millions in sales results year after year. Appearing on Good Morning America, QVC, HSN, and with gold medal awards won. I have many positive references. From the National Society of Inventors to the inventor of the LCD projector, Gene Dolgoff, the New Jersey 2001 Inventor of the Year, references from NASA and Fortune 500 companies. Most love working with me. I'm a former class clown. Here, I got paid. The inventor got paid. Everyone was happy. It was a win-win. I helped little baggy founder, Gene Bafani, find funding for his business. Now he's grown to record-setting sales results. I helped Gene Dolgoff find an executive from DARPA to help grow his business and helping him sell patents at the moment. I helped Dr. Sundar sell patents on new light bulbs we worked on developing to have record setting sales results. And here you see all these inventors were light bulb creators before Edison. We shouldn't forget contributors in history. And facts are, when I was just warming up as an inventor, I also began to design and invent similar products to what later became the electronic cigarette, Facebook, Square, Shark Tank, America's Got Talent, Google Glass, YouTube, Apple Watch, Ring, Bumble, Tile, Keychain, breathalyzer, Google Pay, Apple Wallet, and a hundred times more. If I was just paid to invent and had salary and funding, I could have worked and developed many similar products years prior to these mega brands. 
I'm not trying to take credit away from these brands or founders or entrepreneurs. They're brilliant. I love their products. But success is about finding the right people to work with. People who live by the golden rule or ethical. And it wasn't always a focus in the past inventing. It was more of a hobby that I did sporadically. But after seeing companies grow to billions in sales results, billions of profits, and collectively grow to over a trillion dollars, developing similar products, I also began to design an event. Only then did I truly recognize my one-of-a-kind talent is really inventing. Now I'm looking to take that talent to the next level. As stated before, before the iTunes store came out, and the iPod, I began to design similar products. I called it Music Boy. Save your song on a chip, share your chip with your friends so your CD doesn't scratch up Music Boy up to the internet. Reached out to Nintendo to try to make it happen. They had a no unsolicited idea policy. Sega helped pioneer social media with the IR7000 communicator in 1995. Build a profile of your friends and self and connect by instant messaging using infrared technology. That product inspired me to want to build the largest social networking website in the world. I called it DreamSpace. In 1998, I took a website development class and I described on the back of my syllabus, broadcast your videos for the world to see, share, and comment about. Like-minded friend search. At the time, Six Degrees was a popular social networking website, but I had bigger ideas in mind for social media. I began to draw and describe similar product concepts to what later became Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram back in the late 90s. Then I completed a research study on the psychological benefits of social networking on individuals. Sponsored by Salisbury University and completed a market feasibility report at Disney World to see if there's demand for a new social networking website by interviewing people around the world. And there was demand. I was the first to research the market, invent, and build a social network before Mark Zuckerberg. And I wasn't a coding genius like Mark Zuckerberg. My strategy for success was different. It was to reach out to Disney to try to build it together. Sadly, they had a no one's list idea policy. If they let me in the door, we would have made history. I didn't give up. I described on my website anything you wish to share, stories, ideas, videos, movies, experiences, we post to our web community. Similar to what Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Tumblr, TikTok, Snapchat later developed. Share your stories, share your ideas, share your videos to a web community. Tumblr let you effortlessly share anything to a web community. Those are almost the exact words on my website. When my product descriptions were further developed, billion dollar companies emerged and got acquired for over a billion. Facebook connected students together first, then businesses. My website said we unite the minds of inventors, businesses, and all people to a web community. That's similar to what Facebook later developed. When they developed my product descriptions, they grew an 800 billion valued company. Even Clubhouse, an audio social network, I filed a patent application on around 2015 and envisioned years prior. I didn't, it's not that I didn't execute. I built a social network for inventors and a hit TV show for inventors. And I thought that would make me millions of dollars, but a con man hurt my business. And I didn't have funds for the rest of my best ideas. But at the time, when Facebook emerged, less than 20% of the world population was connected to the internet. I had a bigger idea in mind for the future when 75% of the world population would be connected to the internet. And that's what I'm working on now. I was on Jay Leno with a similar product to what the electronic cigarette leader became, now growing to an $80 billion business. Won an award from the History Channel inventing a mobile coupon app and financial payment app to be named the Modern Marvel. Mobile coupons now have over a billion users. Here was written up in Rampo Magazine. His idea of innovation tells the digital coupon system utilized at stores. And on the History Channel, my invention was publicized. When companies further developed, billion dollar businesses emerged. Even the Honey app began to design a similar product as well. Collectively, these mobile coupon apps and financial payment apps are worth well over $100 billion. Jack Darcy filed a patent application on a mobile credit card reader for a watch. I mean, for a phone. <laughs> I filed one on a watch and phone, but this product grew to $109 billion in market valuation, a mobile credit card reader for a phone. Jack Darcy filed a patent application in 2009. I filed a patent application in 2004 on a similar product to what the Cash App later became and Square. And I described the watch that's a personal financial planner. You keep track of your assets, liabilities, paycheck savings, and bank book statements. And it had a... a a slip on to process your credit card payments within a watch. I focused on a watch more because a patent needs to be unobvious. And I thought it was less obvious to have a watch that was a credit card reader than a mobile phone. But I also filed on a mobile phone as well. According to the first to invent law, I might just be the true and first inventor to what later became a $100 billion product. Here's my invention lab book record where I described for a watch or phone, a portable credit card reader that processes payments. What Google Pay later developed, Apple Wallet, Square, 
And many popular fintech apps used today envision similar products. This proves I have a history of creating more winning product concepts than most. Facts verified by a math professor who signed my invention lab book record in 2003 and agreed to an affidavit swearing under oath this took place because it did. Here's my renderings on a credit card reader for a watch or a phone or a device that attaches to a phone. Similar, I'm not saying my inventions were 100% the same, similar. But it proves the talent I have, the right investors and funding, being paid to work to just invent. Oh my goodness, I can only imagine what I could have done. I was just warming up in the past. I reached out to AT&T to try to make it happen and Apple, they all had no unsolicited idea policies. If they let me in the door, it would have made history. Google bought Fitbit for 2 billion. Fitbit filed a patent application in 2009. I filed in 2004. Here's my patent application. A wellness watch that keeps track of your pulse rate, blood pressure, stress levels, using Galvanic skin response technology and keeps track of your, the steps you walk, calories you eat, and much more. Similar to what the Apple Watch later became in Fitbit. These two products collectively produced over 150 million units sold and Fitbit got bought by Google for $2.1 billion and then further developed my intellectual property that was pending. Now I didn't create the dating industry, but I began to design mobile dating apps before the app store came out. It's now growing to a $10 billion industry. Look, this is my provisional patent application, idea number 279 of mine. Women will be able to send messages to single guys in the area if they want to be contacted. That's similar to Bumble. Let women make the first move. Now Bumble has over 70 million users. And grew to a $6 billion company when they further developed my product descriptions. And I know you're saying that's not a patent application, but a provisional patent application, you can just quickly describe your concept. File it at the patent office. You don't even need pictures. You don't have to be specifically detailed. As you see, that's idea number 279 of mine. I quickly jotted down my hundreds and hundreds of ideas when I tried to break Edison's invention record so that when I had the right investors, or companies to work with and develop, we'd create winning products. Here's some drawings I made, UI and UX that I had done. Now, Google Glass loved the product, but I won an award in my MBA program inventing a similar product to what Google Glass later became. An area developed smart glasses to help the handicap. I also filed a patent application on that as well. And that's what my award at FDU was about. Fairly Dickinson University, vision sign language assistant operator with smart glasses to help the handicapped and also let you connect to the internet and do everything Google Glass began to develop. And I became also designed years prior to Google. I invented smart glasses, very similar to Apple Glass, which is going to come out, Samsung Glass, even tile device that keeps track of your belongings. Filed that at the patent office in 2004. Think, raised $13 million, a device that alters your brain waves by electrical impulses. I filed that at the patent office in 2004. Mira, oh, sold for 500 Mira, million. Now, I didn't think of Mira exactly as it is today, but I had a similar Mira product. And I'm not saying my products were the same, I'm saying they were similar. And this is the value that I offer investors and companies. When we work together, we create winning innovations that benefit lives. I'm looking for your help to bring my talent, career, and business to the next level. I was on American Inventor with my airbag helmet invention. George Foreman almost invested. Companies in Europe and Asia developed a similar product as you see there. It's now saving lives. Octavus Rift got bought for 2 billion. I filed at the patent office. Virtual computer screen, 3D, similar to Microsoft HoloLens. I didn't invent virtual reality, watched the movie Lawnmower Man, but I had new ideas for how it could work. Now I'm working on holographic innovations and much more. I'm just showing that I was seeing the future in designing similar products what later became Octavus Rift and Microsoft HoloLens in the very early stages of concept development. When we work together, I help companies envision dozens of ideas, even hundreds of new products. And then we narrow it down to what will work. Based on my years of insights and research, you can count on me to help your business or fund identify or to create winning products. Keychain breathalyzer, got a million dollar investment on Shark Tank. I filed that at the patent office two, in 2004, idea number 26 of mine, a keychain that's also a breathalyzer. I know I quickly jotted down that description, but when you have thousands of ideas like I have, sometimes that's all I had time to do. And I wasn't being paid to work. I was doing this as a hobby. Yes, later on, I got paid to work and to invent. Now, Shark Tank TV show, I loved it. My main passion in life was to help entrepreneurs with their creative dreams. I reached out to ABC executives and Disney executives. Bob Iger, the former CEO of Disney. Adriana Wong, vice president at ABC. I tried to create the Shark Tank TV show by reaching out to the Walt Disney Company and ABC Network. And here's my TV show treatment, a show where people compete those 
one of the best ideas when we angel investors to bring, bring them to reality on a TV show. Copyright begins when it's in tangible form. And I know that doesn't look like a detailed TV show treatment. It was just a brief description of my TV show concept. Search for the next top turnaround CEO in America where CEOs would go into businesses to help them grow. That was my copyright. <laughs> when it was later developed, CNBC had, had tremendous ratings, creating the profit. I flew at the Hollywood Pitch Fest and almost sold that TV show. But without a salary or funding, I had to give up and get a job. American Idol didn't sell for dozens of meetings. It takes salary, it takes funding to make amazing things happen. And I didn't always have that. At times I did, but it wasn't always a focus in the past. But after seeing so many TV shows emerge and product concepts that I also began to design and invent, looking back, I regret working some jobs and I just wished I focused on my business. But now we move forward and moving forward, I'm looking for more help with my talents. Prior to these famous production companies creating America's Got Talent, America's Next Top Model, Big Idea, Dancing with the Stars, Desperate Housewives, The Job, Crowd Rules, I described similar TV shows. My 700 plus records would prove it. Most filed at the patent office or copyright office. I'm not trying to take credit away from anyone else. I love these TV shows. I didn't always have funds for an entertainment attorney or a sizzle reel or a pilot. And it wasn't always a focus. But moving forward, I want it to be a focus because I have amazing ideas moving forward. I reached out to Disney to try to make it happen. They had a no one's list of idea policy, but the good news is I almost sold a TV show to MGM called Crowd Justice to inspire the world to mediate when in conflict. But then my mom got cancer. My dad got sick with kidney disease and Alzheimer's. And I had to put business aside to help family. I have a pipeline of innovations to help your business or fund. And I work with some leading inventors. An invention of new light bulbs, a microwave that could heat and cool, a new version of the internet, and so much more. We have a pipeline of innovations to help your business or fund grow. I can help design and develop new products for you and help you get licensing deals, form strategic partnerships. That's why my business was named one of the most innovative in New Jersey. We have some experts that can help with your invention, but we're very selective on who we can help. My new products are a router, a new phone, a new credit card reader, a new mouse, and much more. My core values are integrity, transparency, teamwork, and creating win-win deals. Let's rebuild the global economy by working together. I have a history of winning invention awards from some of the most prestigious institutions in our nation. Named best new hire three times. Asked to run for public office due to my creative leadership. And I showed that I began to invent products in the mobile industry, TV industry, consumer product industry, and dozens of industries. Let's work together to rebuild the economy. With the pandemic more now than ever before, we need to work together. I'm available for hire, investment, licensing deals, acquisitions, joint product development deals, developing new products that inspire, illuminate, and enrich the hearts and minds of users. It's what I love to do. And as Walt Disney taught, what takes years to accomplish can be created in record setting time with far better results when we team up with great companies and leaders to develop the best new products to serve mankind. That's what I'm about. I'm looking for a new opportunity. 973-723-1628, Daryl, boundlessinnovations.co. And where do you see what's next? My new invention could transform the world and grow into a billion to a trillion dollar company. I'm confident of that. And when people doubted me in the past, I sometimes gave up on my ideas, but never again will I. It was just warming up in the past. Imagine what we could do in the future. I'm looking to bring my talent to the next level with your help. Have a great day and thank you for your time. Daryl.